Hello ocean people. Welcome back to Brent Durand Underwater. And as you might have guessed, today we're going to talk about exposure and your histogram. So we're going to talk about the relationship between the exposure settings with lots of tips for whether you're a beginner, an intermediate, or even an advanced shooter. We're gonna talk about the exposures we'll use and the strategy for shooting macro, for shooting wide angle, and for shooting with constant and ambient light. Finally, we'll dive into the histogram and I'll show you how to use the histogram in order to properly gauge and properly measure the exposure you're seeing in your camera when you're shooting, but then also when you're editing. So let's dive in, let's hit it. Exposing your underwater images correctly is so, so important. Now, a lot of you may say, well, I use really powerful post-processing tools and software, maybe Photoshop or Adobe Lightroom or Premiere Pro or Final Cut. And yes, you do have a lot of leeway if you're shooting in RAW to make those adjustments to your exposure and to add or subtract contrast and things like that. But if you're using that creative leeway just to adjust the basic exposure, you're missing out. If you have the exposure correct in camera when you're shooting, now you have the ability to really work on those contrasts. You have the ability to capture the color you want and the shadows you want in the scene. And you can use that editing capability to adjust those aspects versus trying to use the post-processing capabilities to save the footage. So I hope that makes sense. You know, my, my philosophy goes back to the film days, which is get it right in camera. Camera. The better you can shoot your image in camera, the better you're going to be able to edit it and the better results you're going to have overall. Now, of course, there's a few very specific shooting circumstances where you may want to underexpose or overexpose images, but you can't do that without the fundamental understanding of these settings and using the histogram. And here we have the exposure triangle. So you'll see that ISO, shutter speed, and aperture create the fundamentals of our exposure. And this is true for topside photography and for underwater photography. The only difference, as you'll see on the sides, is that we use strobes and artificial lighting underwater, which adds another element depending on how we're going to shoot. Now, the reason this is important is because as we start adjusting the settings away from our default and our jump settings that I mentioned before in my best settings video, we, we need to understand this relationship in order to make adjustments. So let's add the diagram for equivalent exposures here on the screen. And now this looks very confusing, very intimidating. How do you know what all these numbers are? Are they full stops, two thirds stops, one third stop? The key takeaway here is not necessarily memorizing all these numbers. Of course, you need to know what each setting and changing the settings is going to do to your exposure. But the key takeaway for this video is that we need to understand the relationship between these exposures. If you change one thing, you're going to have to adjust another thing to maintain an even exposure. So let's say we have an aperture of f5.6 and a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second. That creates a great exposure. Okay, that's great. But now we change our aperture from f5.6 to f5.6 eight, all of a sudden we're going to have a darker image. So in order to maintain that great exposure, we're going to have to slow down the shutter speed to 1 125th of a second. Now you'll notice that we're still going straight across this diagram and creating an equivalent exposure. So as we look at changing all these settings and adjusting our settings to create a good exposure, we need to understand this relationship. Now, of course, strobes add another element for certain types of scenes. So let's dive into that. When we're shooting macro photos, we are using strobe light or flashlight exclusively to light our scenes. So we are going to pick our camera settings based on the aperture we want to use, which of course defaults to the sensor size, the lens, the wet lenses, the diopters we may be using. So we are going to set our camera settings and then our strobe light or our flashlight is going to come in and fill the scene and light the scene. So that's going to be the main thing we'll be adjusting in terms of exposure for macro photos. For shooting wide angle, we have two different things to worry about in terms of our exposure. We have our ambient light and we have our strobe or flash fill light. So in this diagram here, you'll see that we need to start by metering the exposure of the ambient light. Now I'm going to try and get the ambient light to, to create that nice blue water color or green water color, hopefully not brown water color, depending on where you're diving. Um, and, and that's gonna be the first step. And I like to break this out to create simple methodology and simple steps in creating a great exposure. So the first thing we're going to do in our wide angle images is adjust our settings based on the basic camera settings in order to create nice blue water for the ambient light. 
The second thing we're going to do now is add fill light from our strobes or our flashes, which fills in the foreground of the scene. You know that these lights will only go about two meters, about six feet, maybe eight, a little further, it depends, in the water, so these are meant for illuminating close subjects. So first thing you need to do, get that nice background color correct, then add that strobe light, which will not affect the, the ambient light that you'll see in the background. So it's a one-two process because in adjusting the power of the strobes, you don't need to worry about the settings you already took care of with that ambient light and that blue light. Now the other style of shooting here is constant light or ambient light. And the reason that I bucket these together is because both of these are shooting where you can see the results in advance. So it, whether you have a, a video light or a dive torch sitting there lighting the subject, or whether you're shooting something far away with no artificial lighting at all, think of a whale or a shipwreck, either way you can see what you're doing and you can adjust your exposure in camera without having to worry about a bright flash or a pop from a strobe that's adding another unpredictable element. So for both constant light, using an artificial light, and for ambient light, using no lights at all, you are going to be able to use some semi-automatic settings in the camera, and you'll also be able to measure that exposure up front using the histogram. So if that's a bit intimidating, don't worry. Check out this video I made completely on constant light shooting and constant light camera settings. It will talk you through all of those different tips, tricks, and camera know-how. Of course, if you like the fact I've got all these videos, hit subscribe because that is awesome and that shows me a lot of support so I can keep making these videos in my spare time. Now, how do we measure exposure? We measure exposure using the histogram. And this is so, so, so important for shooting underwater photos and for shooting underwater videos. Now, data doesn't lie. What happens is when you go underwater, you're in a dark ambient light condition. Um, whether you're just down deep in the water or whether you're on a night dive. Imagine everything else is dark around you, it's totally black, and you're looking at this glaring LCD screen. Think about looking at your smartphone in bed or in a dark place. You know, that screen is bright. You may want to turn down the screen intensity. Now, let's say you're shooting something that's underexposed underwater on a night dive, it's going to appear very vibrant and bright in your LCD screen, which is misleading. This is why we need to use a histogram. So here we go, I've got a classic example of a histogram, and what you'll see is this bar, this bell curve, maybe a double bell curve in between two different edges. On the far left, we have a black point, and on the far right, we have the full white point. If you go outside of these points, you have no data to work with while post-processing. So if you see that bell curve here, that gray line, over slam to the left and touching the left border, you're going to have a lot of black area that's underexposed. Now, if your histogram is slammed over to the right side, you're going to have an overexposed area, which also has no data. It's white pixels. There's nothing there to work with. What you want for proper exposure is to look at this histogram and make sure all the data, all that gray line or the white line, depending on your camera, is going to be between those two points. Now, we can look at this and relate it to Adobe Lightroom, which has different zones within the histogram, which is blacks and shadows, the main exposure, and then you'll have highlights and even the whites areas. So between those points, we have those zones, which can kind of go back to something Ansel Adams put together with the zone system. And that's a lot, so look that up, type it into your search browser and look at the zone system. But what this tells us is that we want to keep all the data from the image within that black point and the white point within the histogram. It doesn't necessarily matter what it looks like, there's gonna be different shapes that will tell you the different areas of exposure and how bright they are within the histogram but the takeaway is we want everything to be fairly centered. Now, if we look at one image like these nudibranchs here and try and see the exposure differences as we go up and down a stop of light, you can really start to see the histogram move. So watch the image. You'll see that the image is getting brighter and darker, but you'll also see the histogram move corresponding to the brightness and darkness of that image. And this is exactly what we're looking for when we're looking at our histogram in the camera. So the pro tip I will always say is that after every single image, you should be reviewing your image and looking at the histogram. Make sure that the exposure is correct. Make sure that your artificial light from your strobes or even your constant light is correct. Make sure all these things look good in terms of exposure. Then you can start shooting more frames and look at other elements like composition or behavior within the subject. But everything starts with that basic exposure and getting that exposure correct. And as we discussed, the histogram is the way to do that. Thank you.
And another pro tip, this is to use in-camera highlight alerts. And what this does when you set it up in your camera is it will flash when you have something that's totally black with no data underexposed or something that's totally white with no data overexposed. These, this data is outside of the histogram and your camera will alert you to that. So you can say, yeah, you know, that's intentional. I want something to be very dark or very bright, like in a sunburst um, and that's okay. Or you'll say, oh shoot, I didn't mean to do that. Let me adjust my exposure so that I can eliminate um, that, that overexposure or that underexposure. So stay tuned for a full video on that on using in-camera highlight alerts in the next couple weeks. Subscribe so you know it's coming and um, stay tuned for that. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I reply to every single question. I wanna have a lot of information here and make this a community. Of course, if you found this helpful, please share it with your friends, other underwater photographers. I really appreciate that. Hit that subscribe button down below and I'll be back soon with a lot more tutorials, tips, and tricks.